Hello, everyone, and welcome to this latest webinar from Omdia brought to you by Informatech. Today, we'll look at 400G and beyond, driving next generation data centers. 400G is accelerating the data center evolution. So our panel will explore the 400G market, data center requirements, adoption, technology options available inside the data center, and the testing challenges and solutions for a post 400G environment. Our webinar is co-presented by Omdia and our partners, Expo and Juniper Networks. My name is Alan Tatara, Senior Event Manager for the Omdia webinar team, and I wanna thank everyone for joining us. So before we get started, let me just take a few moments to kind of walk you through the features available on our webinar today. So the console that you're looking at, it is completely customizable. So this means you can open, close, move, or even resize any of the windows that you have open on your screen and arrange the console any way you like. Now at the bottom of your console, there are a number of application widgets. One of these is the resource list widget and this is where you're gonna find additional material about our topic, including the downloadable slide deck from our session, as well as other valuable information, including a special report authored by analyst Lisa Huff. So make sure you check this out during the webinar. You can join in on the conversation via Twitter. All you have to do is make sure you follow us using the hashtag NextGenDataCenters. We will have a live Q&A session directly after our presentation, so please remember to submit your questions or comments at any time by using that Q&A widget that you see located on the left side of your screen. Note that this webinar is being recorded and that the on-demand version will be sent out to you within about 24 hours. And then finally, if you experience any technical issues, all you have to do is click on that question mark widget and you will get the answers that you need. All right, so now let me take this opportunity to introduce to you our panel. So first leading our discussion is Lisa Huff. Lisa is a senior principal analyst in the optical components segment at Omdia. Joining Lisa is Jean-Marie Villain. Jean-Marie is a product line manager at Expo. And routing out our panel, we have Profil Lalchandani. Profil is a senior director of product management at Juniper Networks. So welcome to our panel. We are honored to have you with us today. So Lisa, let me now pass the controls over to you so we can get started. Thanks, Alan, and welcome everybody, and thanks for attending our webinar. This is the agenda. I will go through a few market trends, and then our other two speakers will do the majority of the rest of the presentation, and I'll come back on for the conclusions and the um, audience Q&A. So when we talk about 400G, we're, we're talking about this webinar in particular, we're talking about inside the data center primarily. And we're talking mainly about internet content provider data centers. This is the current architecture. It's a generalized architecture. Of course, every data center is different. But we have everything from DCI, super spine spine, leaf, top of rack, and then of course the servers that, that uh, are the most important part of the data center. This just shows where we are today, optics um, 2020. So we're, we have primarily 100G from the top of rack out to the super spine, as well as DCI connections. DCI connections are transitioning to 400G and have been for a couple of years. At the server, we're see it's 25G, 50G direct attached copper or active optical cables. And that's all gonna transition pretty quickly starting next year to 400G um, LR optics in the spine and super spine and some, even some of the DCI connections. And 400G, um, actually uh, DR4 and FR4 in the leaf and spine. And then, of course, 50G and 100G in the server connections. When we look at what that looks like moving forward, this is our forecast for the next six years. Um, you could see that this year they're really, um, really the 100G is still the primary data center con connection. There's still 40G actually in enterprise data centers. Th these forecasts show both enterprise and ICPs, but Moving forward, um, 100G will start to decline 
in favor of 200G and 400G. And you could see, we think that 200G is really just a transition um, data rate. And that 400G will take over by 2025, by volume, but by revenue in 2023, because it is quite, more, quite expensive, a lot more expensive than 100G. When you look at the vari variance that within the 100G inside the data center, um, the main reason we haven't seen the, the adoption quicker than today um, is because the power consumption was too high and the price was too high. Now that price has come down considerably in 2020 and it's expected to come down even more in 2021 and the same with the power. So you could see that our forecast um, in 2021 is um, larger and 2022 is really starting to take off. And what we see is DR4 and FR4 as the main variants that are going to be in the um, leaf spine and super spine of the network. Um, for server connections, AOCs and DACs inside the data center, um, some of the AOCs will also be in the top of rack to leaf. Um, you can see there's still a lot of 25G and a lot of 10G for enterprise. The 25G is going to be focused mainly in China ICPs. Um, they use uh, AOCs, um, 25G AOCs instead of modules for the server sometimes. And then moving forward, you can see that uh, the 400G will really start to grow. For the DAX, 10G to 100G. And you could see that the um, 25G is really starting to decline. For the rest of the presentation, I'm going to pass it on to Prafool. Thank you, Lisa, and good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Now, the need for 400 gig in the data center essentially comes from the exponential growth in network traffic that we have been seeing. The digital transformation that enterprises have been undergoing for the so many years has, as you all know, has only been accelerated by COVID. And enterprises in all shapes or form now realize that the IT infrastructure is a key component of their supply chain and the agility of their entire enterprise essentially depends on the performance and agility of their infrastructure. Now, while we see that enterprises, some enterprises will continue to build out their own private cloud, there are others who are already realizing their digital transformation with the help of cloud providers. Now, this uh, acceleration or migration to pu public cloud is only putting more pressure on the infrastructure of the cloud providers, whether it is the infrastructure as a service provider or a SaaS provider like Salesforce or others. And, and furthermore, as we see over the next few years, 5G deployment starting to build out, that's only going to increase access speeds to the consumer or the user, increasing their data rates, and then again, putting more pressure on the backbone as well as data center fabrics. Now, if we look at uh, you know previous transitions that of speed that have happened in data center, data center fabric speeds tend to follow server access speeds. Now, as Lisa already pointed out, that we do expect the 25 gig to remain strong uh, for the next few years, but we're already seeing momentum around 100 gig server access and 50 gig server access. So as those server access speeds move from 25 gig to 100 gig, the bandwidth or the fabric, data center fabrics generally tend to move in lockstep from 100 gig uh, to 400 gig as well. And not to mention, not to forget rather, that the proliferation of data that we are seeing and the need to crunch data in real time using AI and ML is again only increasing uh, the pressure to improve the access speeds for storage and improving the performance and latency for storage, which is again what 400 gig provides. Now, uh, we could easily have built out capacity or our network operators could easily have built out capacity by adding multiple 100 gig lanes, right? Four by 100 gig offers the same capacity as a single 400 gig. But 400 gig, what it does is improve the economics of the equation, both from a cost per bit standpoint, as well as a power per gig standpoint. What enterprises and cloud providers will realize or are realizing is that their business models do not hold up 
if the rate at which the costs go up is at the same rate as their network traffic. And moreover, uh, fewer optics also means lower supply chain costs. And then finally, we all always seen that capacity and applications have held a symbiotic relationship with each other. I have absolutely no doubt that as 5G access speeds uh, come into play and 400G uh, network capacity comes into play in data center networks and in the backbone, there are new series of applications that are going to spawn around things like app in gaming or artificial intelligence or autonomous driving that is only going to put even more pressure uh, to upgrade the network capacity. Over to you, John Murray. Yeah, thank you, Bafo. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. A really good information here. So on my side, uh, and you know, you may have seen this slide already, and as Bafo just mentioned, you know, with all the new technology, including 5G, uh, this is where we are going to see the push back in the network and where the migration will happen. So we have heard Lisa on the server side has already a lot of uh, discussion of new data rates, and we'll be going through that in the next few slides. Same from the top of the rack and the leaf by connection, definitely on the router and core with the TI. And the key point here in this slide is actually to show that pretty much around 70% of the traffic is happening inside a data center. So we are going to talk today a lot about what's happening inside. So you can actually see most of the traffic is happening inside of the data center. Pretty much if one bit comes in at that data center, pretty much multiply 900 times. So you can see the pressure definitely on the network. And we'll be going through all the different aspects, where is that happening and what are the challenges in this presentation. A full. Thank you. So uh, let's look at the economics of the situation, right? Now, one of the biggest challenges that both cloud operators as well as service providers have are facing is that as IP traffic continues to grow, the revenues do not grow at the same rate or sometimes they remain flat. In a highly competitive market with multiple service providers, it is extremely difficult to extract that extra dollar from customers for just network capacity alone. And even enterprises will realize, or are, have already realized, going up as their revenues uh, you know, go up. So this is where 400 comes to, uh, comes to help, or at least improve the economics fit. We have already seen that from a standpoint of a 400 gig switch port, as well as a 400 gig optic, the cost of a 400 gig is less than four times the cost of a 100 gig switch port and optic. Uh, as an example, if I look at data center reach optics, uh, even today in the market, a 400 gig optic is around in the range of 2.5x or 3x multiples of a 100 gig optic of the same reach. But again, cost is not the whole story. There is a power. More efficiency aspect that plays into the total cost of ownership. And if you look at the two comparisons on the right hand side of the screen, uh, the first one is between a switch. Uh, Between two switches, if you see that the, the power consumption of a 400 gig switch compared to an equivalent 100 gig switch. This happens to be a Broadcom Tomahawk generation of switches. You will see that a four hundred X switch obviously offers.
four times the capacity, but at less than 2x multiple of power. Similar story on the optics side. Right. Again, looking at data center reaches. We are seeing that 400 gig optics today are about three times. Times or 2.5 times power consumptions. The optic of equivalent reach. But over time, this range. is going to improve even further to around 2x. It's multiple at 4x the capacity. Over to you, John. Mike. Thank you, Bafu. Yeah, and again, same alignment with what Bafu just mentioned. So we know that there will be an impact of size, so port density is a key aspect inside a data center. Same as the power consumption. And also the, the price of the transceivers. So when we look at what what's going on in the layer, of the data center, right? So when we look at the server, side, we already are seeing some migration from 10 to 20. Twenty-five. So, and Lisa mentioned this in this in her presentation. But we're already seeing now trend to go fifty gig and hundred gig on the server link. Now moving up to tier tier one and tier two. And this is where 400 gig will have this fill of play. And the tier one, mainly what we are going to see 
is a DR4 type of transceiver. which are more aligned around 500 meter reach on the tier two. This is where we'll be actually be looking at more at the FI. So the DR4 and FR4. the most popular one for the two one and two two of course when we are looking at interconnecting multiple data Centers. So in the DCI, this is where the core and the ZR and type of interface will be uh, the, the key players there. But again, when we're looking at the different layers, is a migration at every stage. So whatever 100 gig or 400 gig for the top layer. Here's. Now, if we look at the key challenges, right? So let's look at three of them. Right. At this moment, as I just said, and as a breathful in East America, mentioned, there's a lot of pressure in regard to bandwidth. Uh, we see new technologies on the 400 gig side. Not only the 400 gig, internet or the 200 gig internet, but also Also looking at technology like Flexi or even Flexo. So this is one of the key challenges. There. Now the next one is pretty much the optics. Right, we know. That there will be new optics. Coming out, we are we are now playing with GPS FPDD. OSFP, even at Hundred gig, there will be new changes. And the next one is again, we do have multiple application running in the Data centers, we all have a issue with um, uh, 
quality of service, measuring latency. is one key aspect that we'll need to be done. So the commissioning and troubleshooting So now if we move to the new option and solution. Careful. Okay, so now we will uh, take a look at the leading use cases for gig where the early adopters are are going to lie and starting with cloud uh, again as a result of the accelerating digital transformation of enterprise and the move for to public cloud cloud providers are in seeing a constant surge in in both customers as well as a traffic that they handle. And we believe that cloud providers are going to be the forefront of 400 gig adoption in the data center because the economics makes the most sense for them. So they will be the first ones to adopt 400 gig, not only to handle the surge in capacity, but also they improve the economics of their business. We continue to see that stream streaming media is the dominant form of distributing digital content. So we see that media providers as well as gaming providers who care about the experience, their user experience are again going to be at the forefront of adopting 400 gig. Some of these media and gaming providers would try to be, or really all of them, most of them try to be as close to the customer as possible, building out CDNs or content delivery networks, which are already handling terabytes of traffic. And some of these CDN providers, um, at least the largest ones, have already been using 100 gig to server for maybe you know two, three years. 
and 400 gig could not have come quickly enough to improve the performance as well as the latency that they offer to their end customer. Now, moving on to the third bucket, I do believe that enterprises are going to lag behind both media providers, context CDNs, and cloud providers in terms of adoption of 400 gig. But even in the enterprise space, there are use cases around high performance computing, which deal with the assimilation analysis and distribution of real time data and large volumes of real time data where 400 gig is going to have a play. Uh, the application for high performance computing is in almost every industry sub vertical, whether it is you know, weather forecasting or whether it is oil and gas or whether it is healthcare or retail where real time analysis of uh, information or data is required and it is really a driver for revenue. Right, and high performance computing is is where 400 gig will find a play, because every uh, the, the every bit or every performance that you can extract out of the infrastructure and reduce the latency translates into not just lower costs but improved performance and improved revenue as well. And then finally, if you look at just general purpose compute, right across the broader enterprise, the containerization of applications is going to drive the gen, drive the ecosystem for 400 gig. We know that most enterprises today are still virtualized. They are using VMware as their dominant supplier uh, for virtualization. But there is a growing trend uh, of moving from to containerized workloads. And as that happens, what you see is more and more workloads are higher density of workloads packed into servers, which essentially means that there's more input output or IO per server. Uh, which will drive the transition from 25 gig to either 50 gig or 100 gig on the server migration side, which will eventually drive uh, the data center fabric to migrate uh, to 400 gig as well. Now, if you look at uh, you know the maturity of a 400 gig ecosystem, there are really two components of it. One is the switches. Are the switch ports available? And the second is the optics. So let's start by taking a look at the ecosystem of 400 gig uh, switches. Now, we have seen that 400 gig switches, as, as well as 4 by 100 gig uh, switches, have been available in the market you know, for a reasonably uh, long time. So the ecosystem is reasonably mature, whether you're looking at uh, switch options that do shallow buffer for leaf use cases, or maybe you have deep buffer switches and routers for data center interconnect use cases, whether you favor scale up or scale out designs, uh, fixed and modular switches are available for that. So the ecosystem is pretty healthy uh, from all vendors to come, to be ready for 400 gig in the data center. And there are two additional requirements that are key uh, for for 400 gig evolution. One is that customers who are deploying 100 gig today have been looking for 400 gig ready platform. So they may be good, they may be wanting to deploy 100 gig today because of the cost, but they want to know that the switch or the router is capable of, capable of 400 gig upgrades in the future. And the last thing we see is that that's not just for 100, 400 gig or 100 gig as well, that the security is beginning to play a very, very important role over here. So 400 gig MaxSec that provides inline encryption without any performance penalties is playing a, a very, very key role in customers' uh, requirements, especially if you look at it in the federal space or whether you're looking at it for data center interconnect where you are uh, transmitting large volumes of data over what is essentially an untrusted you know, line. So that's on the switch side. Uh, if we switch over to the optics, now, Lisa pointed out that I think you know the, we, we expected 400 gig to be adopted sooner. If I was sitting back in 2018, I really personally thought that 2020 would be the year when 400 gig uh, would really take off. Clearly, it did not. And one of the reasons is the cost and the availability and the maturity of the optics ecosystem. Having said that, I believe that at least for data center reaches, there are many vendors out there offering many different options. So I think the ecosystem is mature now. But one of the reasons was that when we first started out as an industry, we standardized on sort of the SR8 and the FR8 options. All of these options uh, either are you know eight lanes, uh, eight lanes of fiber at 50 gig uh, lambda wavelengths, 
So the cost of the fiber itself and the cost of the optics was uh, somewhat high. The next generation of optics that came out was more in the DR4 and the FR4 generation, which is essentially either four fiber pairs in the case of DR4 or a single fiber pair in the case of FR4. But in both cases, they are dependent on 100 gig Lambda, which reduces the cost uh, of not just the fiber infrastructure, but it improves the cost of the optic itself. So a lot of these options are available. I, I believe that at least for data center reach, these optics for compare, comparing to 100 gig, again, it's two and a half times the cost. So I think the economics is there too. And some of these optics are also capable of using breakout. And you will see some use cases for breakout in, in subsequent slides. Now, switching over to long reach optics, the story is still uh, maturing. It's slightly different. Uh, yes, we have uh, availability in the market of LR optics that can go to 10 kilometers. Again, the industry, even over here, first dabbled with LR8. Uh, maybe not the most popular option that was adopted by customers, but LR4, uh, which you can cap capable of going to 10 kilometers using a single fiber pair with 100 gig Lambda has definitely uh, more adaptability or viability in the market. But really the killer uh, optic that most customers, especially when they're looking at data center interconnect over Metro reach, uh, I'll be waiting for seems to be the ZR optic and the and the variants of the ZR optic that can actually take you to 440 kilometers uh, using 16 quam modulation. This is not really a, a regular 100 gig pan four optic. This is actually doing wavelength division multiplexing to achieve those lengths using simple filters and amplifiers rather than using a, an expensive. Uh, optical infrastructure to achieve that. So the maturity of that is expected to be any any time between first half 2021 to second half 2021, uh, which is when the use case for data center interconnect with 400 gig is is really going to take off. Handing over to you, John. Sorry. Yeah, thank you again, Paful. Okay, so now looking at where we are today, and this is a sources from the Internet Alliance uh, poster. So we kind of see a couple of uh, interfaces, you know, whatever we're looking at 100 gig or whatever we're looking at 400 gig. So if we look a little bit on the left, of course, the main dominant uh, form factor on the 100 gig has been the QSFP form factor. But we are going to see new players coming out. One of them in there is actually showing the SFPDD, which will offer uh, 100 gig support. And again, this is always related to the fact that people are looking for a higher port density. Uh, a lower price and a lower power consumption. So, of course, whatever interface that can provide these three combination uh, will actually win over the previous uh, form factor. So, we are seeing this on the one to four lane interfaces. Same, when, when you look at the 400 gig, there are also some key changes there. Of course, today, the form factor of the QSFP uh, is still uh, the dominant one uh, with the QSFP DD for 400 gig. QSFP 56 for the 200 gig, but we also have the OSFP interface, which is also another player that offers 400 gig uh, traffic generation. And the OSFP has, uh, you know, a little bit of a bigger uh, form factor, but offers also a higher cooling uh, process uh, based on the design of the transceiver itself. And we are going to see CFP2, which was one of the main uh, CFP uh, 100 gig format. But coming back a little bit on the current side, you know, with the FP2 DTO. So a lot of current type of interfaces, but also moving to new emerging interfaces are going to come later. And we are going to discuss a little bit about that in the next slide. Now, the key thing here with these trends going from 100 gig to 400 gig is also that we are changing modulation. Okay, so mostly on the 100 gig side, we were using the NRC modulation, which is a non-return to zero. Uh, but now in the case of the uh, 200 gig and 400 gig, and even in some particular 100 gig transceivers, uh, we are going to use the PAM4 modulation. A little bit more compressed, providing a little bit definitely a higher bandwidth level. But as you can see, when you're looking at the eye diagram, well, it brings a little bit of a challenge. So instead of having one eye, we're actually now looking at three eyes. What, what does that mean in, in a clear aspect is that regarding noise, while well, we are going to be really more sensitive with noise on the BAM4 versus the NRZ. As if we look at the eye of the NRZ, you know, if you had some errors there, you could actually, in the range of the eyes you have, you could actually 
be able to clearly correct that. Now, when you're looking at the PAM4, definitely a little bit of more of a challenge as the eyes are smaller. So this is a key thing that people will need to look into. Of course, when we are looking at moving to uh, um, the ZR, so the DCI interconnect, where well, we are going to look at the current modulation. Definitely, this is more on the line side. But again, we'll bring a little bit more complexity. So we have moving from NRZ to PAM4 was one level of complexity, but now again, moving PAM4 and looking at the current aspect of thing on the line side will also be a challenge. So as we look at the transceiver itself and what's inside of the data center, there are key points here that would be interesting to look at uh, these transceivers. Of course, we mentioned the power consumption, the temperatures, right? These will also be sensitive to temperature and the power. The registration, you know, the whole aspect of the SIMIS uh, aspect of these transceivers with the pin validation is a key one. Uh, the lane alignment, the skew, and the stress, you know, all of these are running at high speed uh, electrical lanes. So making sure that there's no crosstalk is a key one. So just to make sure we what we did at Expo, we actually did a small survey just to look at where these uh, transceivers were failing and where we were seeing the issue. And you can see here that pretty much around 70% were around the operation aspect. So whatever it's troubleshooting, during the validation stage or the insulation stage, this is where this was showing. And one of the key challenges that our customers saw was pretty much lack of testing methods. So how do you validate the transceiver itself? How do you identify the root cause, right? So you're seeing an issue on the transceiver. So where is it coming from? And in the particular case at this temperature or power consumption, what are you doing that? So there are tools out there that can help you with that, and we will make sure that we cover that in the next few slides. And now I'll be transitioning to Lisa. Hi, just going to pause right here to um, remind you that you can type your questions into the Q&A chat, please. And I will pass it back to Perful. Okay, thank you, Lisa. So we now take a look at a few deployments of 400 gig as they may play out. We'll look at three of them. Uh, starting with the first one where a customer or a network operator may have already built out their data center fabric. These are brownfield deployments with based on 25 gig and 100 gig. And the use case over here is to improve the bandwidth capacity as well as the economics of 400 gig over the data center interconnect which will essentially happen over the metro infrastructure um, as we kind of indicated earlier the optics that will play in this space is essentially going to be lr er or zr optics uh, lr that can go up to 10 kilometers but the zr optics is really where we see the highest demand we do see some of our uh, customers who have held out on 400 gig in the van or data center interconnect until the availability of ZR optics uh, for that uh, for that particular use case. Again, ZR can can considerably change the economics over here. Relative to four ports of 100 gig, uh, there is definitely a big cost optimization in terms of total cost of ownership, not just of our capex. But in the case of data center interconnect, when you're paying maybe a provider for your connectivity, the OPEX, the yearly OPEX that you incur is also affected. And what um, many, many of our customers are beginning to realize is that ZR optics have, having with the capability of going to 40 kilometers and maybe a little more than that, uh, improves the economics because with the use of simple filters and amplifiers over a dark fiber, you can achieve that uh, achieve that length uh, or reach without the use of expensive optical optical gear. The second use case is within the data center. Now, again, you may have pods that you have built out based on 25 gig to the server and 100 gig to the fabric, and you want to upgrade your backbone of your data center with 400 gig connectivity to improve the performance and latency between the data center pods, uh, as you may see over here. So in this particular case, we are looking typically at optics that are in the range of 500 meters, which is based provided by the DR4 optics, or the FR optics, FR4 optics rather, that can give you reaches of about two kilometers. Uh, this probably depends on the size of your 
build out, uh, but DR and FR optics are going to be likely the most dominant, and in some cases, possibly even LR optics over here. Uh, as you will see over here in, in the spine layer, uh, the coexistence of 100 gig and 400 gig in the same switch or router is is critical, and which is why many uh, many uh, many will consume switches and routers today that are 100 gig capable, uh, which do 100 gig today, but are 400 gig capable in the future as well. And then finally, um, the third use case is when you take 100 gig down to the server. Uh, and this is where the application for breakout uh, comes into play, right? This is most likely going to be using uh, either the active optical cable or the DAC copper cables uh, to achieve the connectivity of uh, or taking a 400 gig port and breaking it out into 4 by 100 gig and then connecting it into servers. But as soon as you connect, uh, bring 100 gig connectivity to servers, in order to achieve that east-west traffic, the fabric itself between the leaf and the spine uh, gets upgraded to 400 gig as well. Again, that could be served by SR optics or DR optics, or if you really have a really big footprint, uh, then maybe even uh, FR optics in that particular case. But this is uh, the case where you take 100 gig uh, really down all the way down to the server. Back to you, Gene. Yeah, thank you, Prasul. Uh, that's a good and uh, interesting point here. So when we're looking at, the, again, this table from Internet Alliance, where they are showing the emerging line rate, uh, what we see here definitely on the server, and this was mentioned a couple of times, is the integration of uh, one uh, PAM4 lane. So we are going to see what we call, uh, and you may have heard, SR1, FR1s. Uh, this will definitely be deployed on the 50 gig level, where it will be a one single PAM4 lane uh, level. Now moving to 100 gig, again, emerging interfaces, we are going to see new trends here with the DR1s, uh, which are designed for the inside of the data center, offering, again, a one single PAM4. And same for the um, 200 gig and 400 gig, where, again, the FR4, as I mentioned before, and the DR4 players there. So now if we look at a big picture on how these transceivers are located and where they are uh, and what sort of field of play, of course, uh, like I said, lower cost is one point, smallest as possible for a higher port density, and of course, lower power consumption. This will be the three key things that people are going to look at when they're making the decision on which interface that they're going to use. So again, if we look at the QSFP today, we see the QSFP DD as being the main player, QSFP 6 for the 200 gig. Same for on the OSFP uh, for 400 gig validation. And in there, there are going to be some, you know, current transceiver that's going to show up with the DR, as Russell mentioned, for the DI, and even the CFP to DCO with 100 gig, 200 gig, and 400 gig capability for metro or even longer reach application. But on the 100 gig, also on the SFP side, we will see the introduction of new players like the SFPDD, the SFP, and already discussion for the SFP 112 gig. So a lot of movement on the transceiver side happened in the next few years. Of course, when we're looking inside a data center and the interconnect, there are the breakouts interface where you can interconnect a 400 gig switch per se to a 200, uh, to a two by or a one, a four by 100 gig uh, switch interface. So you're actually using one 400 gig and connecting to four ports of 100 gig. And again, these will need to be validated. So how do you do that? Well, you have to do your link validation. You know, there may be frequency validation that you want to do. You may want to do some bird test to analyze this. Same for as if you're looking at another configuration. And this is one key aspect with a breakout, right? You could have multiple configuration as a key thing here is to provide a low cost interconnect. So once you have a look at all these pictures and you have analyzed that everything is fine, well, you, you could then go to the next phase where you are going to look at, okay, validating the service and seeing what's the quality of service that you get. Of course, all of these connections may, you know, has a push. And at the end of the day, these are going to customers. So you have to look at what the SLA will provide you. So you want to have the big picture in the connection. Now, if you are using AOC and DAC cable, so, and these are pretty much deployed in a network where you're not going to go ahead and disconnect all of these cables. So you need to find a way to validate them, same as you did with the breakout and the receivers. So there are tools out there like iOptic that allows you to connect on one end of these 
this AOC cable and at the far end of the AOC cable and do a series of tests. And again, you don't have to be an expert into this connection. You know, these tools allow you to easily and simply connect the interface and do the interconnect thing at the other end with a loop back. And then it will perform the test. And I did mention, you know, there are key tests that need to be done. Uh, there are the FEG validation, the PAM4 validation, the power consumption. We know that power consumption is a key thing inside of the data center. This will be done and also the temperature variation. So IOPTIC allows you to do that easily. I uh, will pass back to Rahul. Yeah, so Juniper has a rich ecosystem of routing and switching products that enable us to power 400 gig data centers. Across our portfolio of QFX and PTX switches and routers, we offer a performance at scale with the highest possible feature capabilities cost per bit that is optimized and power per bit that is optimized across both our merchant as well as custom silicon. We offer scale of, uh, scale both scale up as well as scale out designs with both shallow buffer and deep buffer options as well as fixed and modular switches. So I have a complete portfolio there. Uh, we have a rich heritage of Junos that has been built over the last you know, 20, 25 years that offers uh, extreme flexibility or versatility for our customers to deploy in many different use cases, whether it is the leaf spine or whether it is data center interconnect or data center edge going across the van. And then finally, Juniper is the only vendor out there that offers a secure 400 gig solution, offering 400 gig MaxSec at line rate without any performance penalties. We believe that Juniper is here for to power data centers with 400 gig. Back to you, John Murray. Yes, thank you, Rafael. So talking about testing tool, I did mention about iOptic. Well, let me provide you a little bit more information on what the tools are and what and what they do. You know, we mentioned the PAM4 is a key point that needs to be validated, so we have that support. Uh, same on the FEC corrections. For 200 gig and 400 gig, the FEC is mandatory, so things need to be validated there. Same for the transceiver power consumption and temperature, and also the registration of each and one of these transceivers, right? So every transceiver, either they use the CMS3, CMS4, and there's almost like CMS5 coming out. So these need to be tested and make sure that they're validating. Of course, some of the signal integrity, you know, with the uh, 400 gig is critical. So having pre emphasis and equalization will also be a key point. So now if we look at the conclusion itself, so when we look at the key point here in into the, the data center infrastructure validation, well, things are may look easy, but they are complex. Uh, we haven't talked today about the connectivity with the fiber. Of course, all of these, uh, the transmission rates, uh, of course, you have to make sure that the fiber and the connectors are clean. So having a clean fiber connectivity uh, tool is also a key point here that will start, uh, will, will be um, clear for the, the user. Same when we're talking about link verification, uh, fiber characterization with OTDR and BERT test, transceiver validation, like I show you here with iOptic, cable validation, either you're using a, a, an AOC, a DAC, or a breakout, this is key. And of course, at the end, traffic generation, this is where you are going to make sure that the traffic is going through and also validating your QoS. So now we'll be moving to um, Lisa. So in conclusion, I think we showed you the increase in bandwidth demands by speed data centers that's driving the need for 400G. Um, then deployment has started in the spine and super spine and some leaf to spine connections with most of the variants um, going to be DR4 and FR4. That's That was repeated in all of us, I think. Switching and optics ecosystem is ready to power the 400G data center, as we saw with all the different products that are available. Um, 400G MaxSec is an increasingly important requirement for security. 
Um, the new server deployments are transitioning to 50G and above connections with DAX and AOCs. And finally, we, we need new te testing technology um, in order to test these higher data rates. So now we are going to move on to the Q&A. Um, let me pull some, some of these up. Um, so first for, um, John, John Marie, I think, how important is the evaluation of the FEC when installing new 400 G transceivers and then Praful after he's done, please answer as well. Yes. So it is critical, uh, as you know, and I mentioned this in the, during the presentation, FEC is a, you know, mandatory thing for 200 gig and 400 gig. How do you know if you have a transceiver vendor A and transceiver vendor B, when the FEC is on, you, you may get some result around 10 to the minus 12 for a BER. But to be able to make that the right decision, you kind of have to look at the prefect values. So now if I'm looking at the prefect value from vendor A and I see they're running at 10 to the minus 6, and I see a vendor B is running at 10 to the minus 9 before the FEC, well, of course, my selection will go towards the 10 to the minus 9 because I know... Yeah, originally the design of this transceiver is of a higher quality than the previous one. And then with the fact, then the fact will be correcting, but there's less chance of getting uncorrectable errors. Raffle, I don't know if you want to add anything. I know that's perfect. Um, nothing, nothing more to add on that. Yeah. Okay. Um... Thoughts on when co-packaged optics deployment for 51 terabit or 102 terabit switches? Um, let's start with Praful. Yeah, that's a good question. So definitely not in the 400 gig generation. Uh, we are uh, constantly evaluating this for every, uh, every generation. Um, uh, so if, even even some of our early analysis that we have done with 800 gig, with, where, where 100 gig surges come into play, uh, we, we believe that the economics uh, do not completely uh, make sense there. So we believe that when we really get into co-packaged uh, optics on the chip itself, it's really going to be in the 1.6 terabit generation, so it's a little bit uh, out there. Uh, I'll take the opportunity since we're talking future <laughs> questions there. There was a question around 800 gig. Um, so again, uh, the way we look at our, uh, the, uh, the maturity of 800 gig, we look at it as in two ways. Right? One is the availability of optics. And interestingly enough, we are seeing that uh, there are optic vendors who are getting ready for 800 gig, primarily as two by 400 gig. By the way, when, even when we talk about 800 gig, we think that the early adoption is going to be around two by 400 gig, so just to get that radix of uh, 400 gig. So optic vendors are getting ready for 400 gig optics next year. So by the end of next year, there should be some options out there. And on the chip side, um, really you are dependent to get to 800 gig once you get into the 100 gig surges generation uh, for chip to optic uh, connectivity. And uh, that, uh, we know that there are some uh, merchant chips out there that are already 100 gig surges capable. So I think in uh, by the end of the year, in end of year next year, the ecosystem should be re should somewhat be ready with FY22 maybe being bringing in some early adopters for 800 gig. But having said that, we still believe that 400 gig is going to be the volume for the next you know two or three years or maybe even more and then 800 gig will have early adopters maybe starting at 522. John marie do you have anything to add there yeah. no i don't have anything i think Preffel said it all i think with the uh, signal integrity these uh, on board uh, uh see if i could do that way uh for 800 gig will be the way to go uh versus 400 gig at the moment was just more of a Okay. Um, from a 400G field perspective, what are the most common parameters that are being looked at for 400G deployments? Um, Jean-Marie, why don't you answer that first? 
Yes, let me do that. Uh, of course, on the field side, of course, the, the first thing, and as I showed it in the slide, it will be the connectivity, you know, making sure that you have your link up so you're running a point of desk and you pass that traffic over your multiple switches, server, routers. And then, of course, then you have to go to the next step, right? So you want to mimic what will be the real traffic at 400K. So you are going to look at things like the traffic generation, where you are going to mix, you know, video traffic, the voice traffic, and data traffic, of course, your key one. And when we're looking at the data the traffic, you are going to look at the latency aspect. You know, we've all been using Netflix and all these other videos as streaming application, and they cannot be latency. And with the, as Ruffle mentioned, with the five upcoming 5G latency, will have you will play here. So we want to make sure that this is fine and at minimum. So looking at the quality of service, and then moving into the service test, but you are going to sell the 200 ports eventually. So you want to make sure that these ports are up to what the customers expect. Brett Fool, anything to add? No, you're good. Okay.